Желаю участникам Всесоюзного собрания плодотворной работы, направленной на всемирное укрепление общественного хозяйства, дальнейшее развитие колхозной демократии. Михаил Горбачев is an important person in the history of Russia. However, I can't make just one video about him, because his rule is so difficult to understand. In addition, I think I have to make a video about what happened before Perestroika and how Gorbachev became the ruler. So, I will talk about another person. In the 70s, members of the Communist Party struggled for power. They wanted to become Brezhnev's successor. One of the actors in the fight was Yuri Andropov. He had been ambassador to Hungary since 1954. In 1956, an anti-communist uprising took place in Hungary. Andropov played an important role in suppressing the uprising. Because of the development, his career took off. In 1957, Andropov returned to Moscow in order to head the department for liaison with communist and Vox parties in socialist countries. He was elected to the secretariat on the party central committee in 1962. In 1967 he was appointed the head of the KGB. It was an influential post in the USSR. At the time Andropov was not ready to become Brezhnev's successor, but he sought it. In the late 60s there was a grand corruption in the Transcaucasian republics. Therefore, the Soviet government decided to change the leadership of these three republics. In 1969, Gidar Aliyev became the leader of Soviet Azerbaijani. He was the chairman of the Azerbaijani KGB. In 1972, Eduard Shvartnadze became the head of Soviet Georgia. He was the Minister of Internal Affairs of Soviet Georgia. Some historians believe that Andropov took the first steps to power in this way. In fact, they both showered themselves during Perestroika. Meanwhile, in 1973, Andropov was promoted to full member of the Politburo, and in that way he gained additional powers. By the way, Andropov actively promoted other figures of the Perestroika. Brezhnev called them my social democrats. In 1974 and 1976, Brezhnev had a stroke. At the time, there were two real candidates for power. Fyodor Kulakov, one of the most influential politicians of uh, that time, he served as secretary of Central Committee for Agriculture. Grigory Romanov was the first secretary of the Leningrad Regional Committee. He enjoyed the support of influential members of the Politburo. Later, Brezhnev survived and continued his rule, but something else happened. In 1978, Fyodor Kulakov died. I remind you that he served as secretary of the Central Committee for Agriculture. Who should replace him? There were two candidates. Fyodor Morgun was the first secretary of the Poltava Regional Party Committee, and Mikhail Gorbachev was the first secretary of the Stavropol Regional Party Committee. First candidate was known as an expert on agriculture. Anyway, he was a good option. Second candidate was the resort secretary because elderly members of the party often visited him at Mineralne Vode. I hope the party had chosen the right candidate because the secretary of Central Committee for Agriculture is a high and responsible post. Mikhail Gorbachev had the support of the second party secretary and Yuri Andropov, so he was appointed to this post. 
It's okay. А причем я замечу, что это избрание произошло э, во многом случайно, потому что Горбачева, э, который тогда находился в Москве, сотрудники общего отдела ЦК, которым руководил Константин Устинович Черненко, долгое время не могли найти. И совершенно случайно обнаружили его на юбилее у одного из ставропольских земляков. И вот в таком подвыпившем состоянии они его и привезли перед светлой очи Константина Устиновича на Старую площадь. И уже оттуда они прошествовали на прием к Леониду Ильичу Брежневу, где, собственно говоря, и состоялось назначение Горбачева на эту ключевую должность внутри Политбюро ЦК. You, you don't know that? In 1979, Gorbachev became a candidate member of the Politburo, and a year later he was elected a full member of the Politburo. Mikhail Gorbachev was a pawn of Yuri Andropov, so when Gorbachev's career took off, Andropov expected his influence. In January 1982, Mikhail Suslov died. He was the second party secretary. This post was very influential, therefore the person who held it became Brezhnev's successor. The main enemy for Andropov was Sholokov. He was the Minister of Internal Affairs of the USSR. Other members of Brezhnev's Dnepropetrovsk clan also hated Andropov. Battle was fought for about three months, ending in Andropov's victory. However, it wasn't enough to become Brezhnev's successor, because Brezhnev wanted to make Sharbisky his successor. He was the leader of the Soviet Ukraine. At the end of November 1982, a Central Committee plenum was appointed for the legal transfer of power. They wanted to do this as follows. At this plenum, Brezhnev wanted to establish the post of honorary chairman of the party, and Sherbitsky was obliged to become the leader of the USSR. However, the plan was halted because Brezhnev died on November 10 of a heart attack. And the end. Yuri Andropov became the leader of the USSR.